What it do, T Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All T All Shade Real Housewives of Potomac Season 8, Episode 12 review. You guys, please make sure that you hit that like button before you get into this review for me. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so. And after that, hit that notification bell button so you know when my videos drop. Okay, so on last night's episode of Potomac, Ashley tells Mia that Karen was mad at her for the way she responded about coming to the Surrey County trip. So Mia was like, how's she mad at me? Like, hmm? Like, okay, all right, all right. Keep that in the back of my noggin. So NECA takes her prenatal, prenatal vitamin uh, pills or whatever with champagne every morning and she has a glass of champagne every night before she goes to bed. Um, I'm not a, a gynecologist. I don't know if this is correct or not, but wouldn't that affect? Does, could that possibly have a effect on her getting pregnant or maybe not? Like, but is it kosher to be taking champagne pills with prenatal vitamins and pills? Like. I just would think that you would not even want to be drinking alcohol and taking your prenatal pills that are, you're trying to use to help you get pregnant. Like, a little weird to me, but she likes champagne that much. I'm, I'm like, do you have to have a glass of champagne every day? Like, okay, girl. So NECA has Lebby over um, to discuss her packing party. Now, remember, Lebby is Wendy's sister's ex-bestie. Um, and so Levy's just wondering, is Wendy even going to come to the packing party? That's the main thing. Like, is she even going to show up? Um, Chris is going to Eddie's, uh, weed rolling event. Uh, Candace is going to go with him, but she won't be able to stay because she had to go film for the show Hush. So Candy asked, was like, how are you going to feel about seeing forehead and ankles? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I mean, if somebody speaks to me, I'll speak. Well, other than that, I'm good. I'm cool. Like, it's not a big thing to me. And I really appreciate the way he responded, the way he's going into the situation, because the way Giselle and Ashley go about it is just so childish and just so beneath me. So the ladies get to the event with their spouses, whoever brings whomever. And I loved Wendy's dress. I loved that tank top inspired dress. It was so cute. Um, and Ashley comes in, she sees Chris. She does not speak. She says she doesn't want anything to do with him. Now I'm confused. How did they get into it? Am I, I did I forget? Like what happened between Chris and Ashley? Am I missing something? Or I just didn't care enough to even try to remember. But I'm like, what? Oh, it was the, the oh, okay, I remember now. It was when she and tried to imply that he was trying to get her to come out to the hotel he worked at. Like he was trying to get on her. That's what it was. Okay, okay. But once again, these were all things that you brought up and put out there in the universe. And then you want to get mad at how somebody responds. Like, how are you mad at him? These women, these women. So Karen comes and as soon as she sees Mia, she walks over to Mia to, to <coughs> clock her and let's have a conversation. Cause I've been hearing a bunch of, he said, she said. So Karen was like, um, what I didn't understand is your response to my invite. Like she cut right to the chase, honey. And Mia was like, did I don't do second string invites? And baby Karen said, no, you aren't second string. You weren't even first string. You were the backup. <laughs> and this is why she is the grand dame and the queen of Surrey County, honey. Yes, ma'am. Don't come for me unless I send for you. Now, was Karen in the wrong in this situation? Yeah, but we don't even care because we don't care about Mia at all. But yeah, you did invite them people after the fact. You know what I'm saying? They weren't who you originally invited. But um, 
it just cracks me up at the audacity of Karen. <laughs> You ain't have to decimate that lady like that. So they start going back and forth arguing. And Mia was like, I should be upset with you because you expected me to drop everything to go to boring a Surrey County. And Karen was like, Mia it's better than your boring a life. I'll tell you that. And so Mia was like, old dog, find some new tricks. And everybody was like, Ooh, she didn't call Karen a old dog. Like how, dare you me yeah and i was like oh you didn't did it now you didn't did it now honey and so karen was like you're a trick so they going back and forth and neka arrives and she thanks wendy for the invite which was you know the right thing to do giselle arrives and in her confessional, she says, I haven't seen Chris since that reunion. It looks like he's gained some weight. Look like he's been doing some stress eating. Jonin. Now, he could have went in on you and talked about them pack of sausages you call a neck or talk about the fact that your um, legs look like turkey legs <laughs> that you get at Six Flags or talk about how your ankles look like you got gout. Girl, he could have said a lot of things about you and he did not, but you still keeping this man in your mouth and still being shady. And then on top of that, you come to Wendy's event and don't speak to her. And Wendy looking like, did she really just walk into my event and didn't speak? And so I saw a lot of people online because Bravo editors then showed all of these instances where they were at group events and Wendy didn't speak to Giselle. And I was like, um, producers, do y'all not understand those were group events? She did not have to speak to her. She didn't go to any of Giselle's events, period. And probably would not go. She did not go and she did not, uh, she wouldn't, if she did go to anything of Giselle, she would have spoken. But this was her event so how are you gonna come to my event and then don't speak you shouldn't have came the only reason why Giselle came is because she was getting something out of it that she wanted which was some weed with her broke ass okay that's the only reason why she came um Roberto came as well um and I was like why are you here oh you here because she here oh okay now I don't even know if Roberto spoke to Wendy or not but y'all rude af I would have told y'all to turn around and leave Period, because you're not about to come up in mind and don't speak. But Wendy was still a gracious host and didn't even make it a big thing. Um, so uh, where was I at? Mia in her confession was like, I have not known Eddie to have a job since I met him. I have never known an always available attorney that's making money. And I'm looking like Mia. You talking about employment is the last thing you need to be doing on this show because you and your man are unemployed outside of this job the, of the, being on this show. So you can't be talking about nobody, husband and employment when yours need to be on uh, the unemployment line. Okay. That's, that's the, you no, that is not a part of your ministry, ma'am. You do not need to be clocking nobody else's apart, uh, pockets. You need to be clocking yours and make sure that y'all can afford this house that y'all staying in, this apartment that y'all staying in, okay? Don't do that. Don't do that. Um. So after that, Wendy points out to the group that she hasn't seen the ladies have this good of a time and laugh together in a long time and she's happy that it could have been at her event her go Giselle Hayden but in her confessional talking about I didn't laugh did I laugh I, I don't remember laughing and they show it back where she just a <laughs> I just can't so G ends up leaving the event early. So after he leaves, Roberto asks Mia how things are going with him. And Mia was like, you know, I want to clock the F out. I can't leave him though. He has nobody. And I'm like, well, say it with your chest. Like, can you make it more obvious you don't want to be with this man? <laughs> like, damn. But you got to respect them. So 
Um, NECA asked Wendy to speak one on one and asked, can they meet up and talk, just the two of them, to bury this hatchet? Like, she's genuinely trying to end this quarrel between them two. And I appreciate that. And I give NECA the thumbs up for that because she has been trying to dead this whole situation. Wendy, on the other hand, still want to be mad. She still want to keep this going. And I was like, oh, well, you know, um, you talked about my mother and you called me a bee or you called my mama a witch. And it's just like, girl, she's trying. Let it go. It's not that deep, bruh. And it's just like, you getting on my nerves now, Wendy. You really, truly are. Like, how? why is it so hard for you to sit down with this woman and have a conversation? It's obvious that she's trying. She wants to get to know you. Why are you being so pig-headed about the situation? So she tells her, you know, she just needs a minute to think about it or whatever. But on next week's episode, they're going to meet, and then they're going to get into it all over again. Um, And I really feel like it's going to be Wendy's fault because Wendy's tripping. Like, she's doing too much for me. So um, Mia and G have lunch together. And she says that, you know, uh, she brings up, how she wanted to divorce him a year prior. And he was like, he found out that she was seeking a divorce because he found the lawyer receipts. I was like, well, God damn, (laughs) damn Mia. So Mia says that it was emotionally draining being around him. And I was like, well, dang, like, can you be more harsh? But she's being honest and truthful. So then Mid conversation, as they're talking about their marriage, Mia brings up Ashley and Michael and how the fact that they have not divorced yet. And so Michael asks, I mean, I'm sorry, not Michael. G asks, how do you think um, you and I would have handled that situation? And Mia was like, oh, what, would a divorce? And he was like, no, it wouldn't have even gotten that far. We would have made an arrangement and probably still stayed together. I get what I want because I married a beautiful woman and you get what you want, but still having me around. Meaning I get to have the trophy wife and you get to still use my money. So this is a marriage of convenience. It's always been that way. It's always been a marriage of convenience for both of y'all. The fact that you can even openly, honestly have this type of conversation and on camera, like, was there ever love there between you two? I don't honestly think so. Um, so Mia is dismayed by this and G was like, I mean, if we can find a deal that makes sense, why would we split up? And basically that means we make a deal that we stay together. I get the trophy wife, you get whatever money, um, and clout that I have and you can see other people. I can see other people, but we just keep it discreet. And that's pretty much what they ended up doing. That's how she got with her man now. Um, So Mia was like, I don't think there's no amount of money that would keep a person in captivity. I don't think that I could do that. And so you can see the G looking like, well, what that mean? And you could tell that she was kind of like put off by his comments, like treating her like she was an object. But I'm like, that's how you presented yourself. That's how you showed up in this marriage and relationship. So how dare you? be taken aback by his statement. I'm confused. (coughs) Like, okay. So then at the packing party, Giselle tries to get Karen and Mia to make up. And Mia was like, you know, well, it takes a trick to know a trick. Everybody like, oh, Lord, here we go. So Karen was like, you all have brought this up to me for eight years about her quote unquote cheating on uh, Bill Gates. And she said, I'm finding it hysterical, but if we're going to talk about rumors, let me show you how that feels. And right then and there, Mia should have got ready for impact. Karen said, I never came across, I never came after your marriage when I heard that you met up with a rapper. I could have done that last year. I also could have said, you're effing a married man. And so everybody was like, oh, you messing with a married man. And so me and her confessional talking about some, first of all, it's not a rapper. (laughs) I love Mia. I love her. So Giselle was like, well, is it, is it true? Is it true? And Mia was like, I'm just hanging out with them, but 
We're not screwing. And Gordon was there. And everybody looking like, what? <laughs> what? And Karen was like, told you. Now, one thing about Karen, when she say she didn't heard something about somebody, two for two so far has been true. When it come to um, Juan and the lady that looked like him, because that girl that he worked with at the school looked like Karen when Karen was younger. I've already done a side-by-side. -side. Young Karen and that girl look exactly alike. So Karen was not reaching with that. She was right about that. Now she right about this. She was uh, she was uh, right about Giselle and um, Jamal. If Karen bring out some tea on you, you might as well go ahead and confess because it's been right every time, every time, honey. Um, and that was pretty much it uh, with this week's episode. They're about to head all, out on their cash trip. And um, it was a it was a decent episode last night. Uh, it was a better episode than what we've seen um, in the last couple of weeks. I'm going to give this week's episode of Potomac. I'm going to give it a B plus just because of Karen and Mia and her gold diggedness. <laughs> it's top tier. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode down below in the comment section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe and hit that notification bell button. I love you all. And I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.